How's it going folks? Taylor Bukowski here. Today I'm going to be talking about resource guarding with dogs. I'm going to explain what it is, why it happens to some dogs more than others, how to treat it, and most importantly, how to prevent it. So if you're ready, let's get started. First off, what is resource guarding in dogs? Resource guarding refers to a dog displaying behavior, growling, snapping, etc., intended to convince other dogs or humans to stay away from a particular treasure or resource. The resource can be food, treats, toys, a place, a bed or favorite chair, or occasionally a person. Okay, now that we know what it is, we can talk about why some dogs exhibit this kind of behavior while others may never guard a resource in their entire life. To understand this, we need to understand what goes on in a dog's mind. Dogs are predators, and predators have certain draws to certain stimuli. When I say draw, I mean that they are attracted to a certain resource, such as food, toys, a prey item running away, warm bedding, a good shelter, and even attention from their favorite person. Resource guarding is not just for predators. I've seen many prey animals, such as horses, fight over food. This can happen when the grazing animals are only fed once or twice a day and they're thrown one pile of hay. With only one pile to feed for multiple horses, one can only expect for fighting and pushing to come about. Since they're prey animals, they usually cause less damage when correcting each other compared to a predator. They will usually pin their ears, swish their tail, turn the butt, kick or bite to claim their spot by the food. Weaker, younger, lower horses will be pushed off of that food. A very normal behavior with horses as it's their natural hierarchy. However, if the human had placed multiple piles of hay for the herd, none of this would be happening. The same thing can happen with any group of dogs, especially if you don't know them or their backgrounds. Meaning, are they resource guarders? Now, yesterday I was speaking with a foster parent whose new foster dog seems to be showing some kind of resource guarding with her two own dogs. Along with other confidence issues, the foster dog is protecting the foster owner from her own animals. Now, it's important to remember this dog is not being mean, bad, or malicious. This is very normal behavior for them to exhibit, especially if they've stayed in a shelter for any period of time, or if they haven't been raised and taught properly how to share their toys and attention. In the dog's mind, she's protecting something she believes is her and instinctively lashes out when someone tries to take it away because she doesn't know if she's ever going to get it back again. Okay, now we know what resource guarding is and why a dog may show this type of behavior. So now it's time to treat it and hopefully learn to prevent it for future cases. Now, whenever I work with a resource guarder, I have to make sure that I actively look for any draw that might cause a fight. By draw, I mean food, toys, or attention. For example, if I have a big bag of treats or even human food on my lap while I'm sitting on the couch, I have to make sure that all and any dogs do not get too near each other in close quarters while I'm eating, as this could cause a fight. If one dog believes another dog is going to get this resource, they may very well lash out and correct this animal to prevent them from getting what they want. One dog can easily push another dog off the resource, just like the horses, so they can get that resource first. Again, they're not being bad, mean, or selfish. It is natural for dogs to want to protect what they think is theirs. So I need to make sure that no dog thinks they are getting anything until they are all sitting and calm. When I'm ready to give them their doggy treats, I take one in each hand, present them to the dogs at the same time while luring them away from each other. It's very important not to feed them next to each other, as again, this could cause a fight. As they follow the hand, they believe they get their own treat and don't feel the need to correct the other dog to get their food. You can do the same thing with dogs when you're playing with them, but just be careful when playing, because this can cause the dog to get excited, and excited dogs are more likely to start a fight. When you're playing with your dog, you want to have a partner with you. That way, each of you can take a dog and play in your own corner of the room. Let the dogs drag their leashes for safety and go at it. Toss a toy a few feet away from you, make sure it doesn't get too close to the other dog, and let them play with it and see if they'll bring it back to you. You don't want the two toys to get too close to each other because again, this creates a stronger draw, which will attract the other dogs. This is training, believe it or not. You're teaching each dog to control themselves in this environment with another animal playing and multiple resources. You can have treats with you and occasionally reward the dog for not going after the other dog's toy. Make sure to keep playing fun and happy. Then switch dogs and continue playing. Try the same technique when giving the dog's attention. Have the dogs leashed and tether one to a couch or have your helper holding them back. Second person with the other dog can stand a few feet away and give them attention. You want the person holding the dog back on leash, the anchor, to feed their dog treats while they watch the owner pet her own dog. Give your dog attention. Praise them. Be very happy, especially if they look away from the owner and her dog. You want a really reward for that. Then switch dogs and reward the other dog for being tethered while the resource guarder gets her attention. Over time, you can slowly decrease the amount of space between each dog while giving them attention. For now, if the dog is in your lap or your general area and they growl at any other animal or person coming near you, you want to immediately get up and move that dog out of your area. You want to calmly and quickly guide them away from your area, go back and take a seat. If they go next to you again and start protecting you, you're going to repeat. Do so until the dog is nice and calm and gets the idea. 
that if they growl, they don't get any attention and you don't want them in your space. So you are teaching each and every dog that if they try to protect you or any other resource, no one gets attention. And you're not angry when you do this. You're just calmly walking away with them and returning to your seat silently. If they stay where they are or they calm down, you can give them a little bit of praise. You can reward them with a treat or even some petting. You can even try taking the dogs and separating them. Have a baby gate between you. You can try petting your resource garter or tossing treats to your dog on the other side of the baby gate. Do this for a couple of seconds and then switch dogs repeating the same process by petting your dog and tossing treats to the other dog on the other side. If you're worried at all about any fights breaking out during training, then teach each dog to wear a basket muzzle. Condition the muzzle to all of the dogs involved. We want all dogs to wear one for safety reasons and to even the playing field. Believe me, it makes the foster feel so much better when they're not the only ones wearing the muzzle because they are very vulnerable. Use any basket muzzle that's not wire. Use the plastic, the silicone, whatever types are out there, don't use the wire ones. And never use the veterinarian cloth muzzle. They're far too restricting and the animals can still nip and bite through that. We want everyone to be safe and comfortable. So those are just a few tips of how to work with a dog with resource guarding issues with other animals. I will make a whole separate video of how to work with a dog who resource guards from humans at a later date. But for now, I hope this helps you with your foster and anyone else who is experiencing this type of behavior with your own dog. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you would like to see next. And until next time, stay positive.